Okay, so it's been a while since I've done anything video related with YouTube. Um, been away, so if you can hear this, then I guess we're getting ready to get started. Um, let's see here, I'm starting to lose practice. <laughs> Tablet, there we go. Uh, let's see if that's showing up. Okay, I think I can see it. I have just finished installing the new Cartoon Animator 4. Um, let's see here, what's this? Failed to install Motion Live 2D plugin for Cartoon Animator or installation canceled. The related application, Face 3D Profile, Motion, da 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 da. Resource Pack will also stop the installation. What happened? All right, so uh, we're off to a great start. Um, have no idea. Um, the program installed. All right, I'm being prompted for the resource pack, so I'm getting that going. So I'm gonna get this um, going in this more natural uh, position as I can I guess you can call it um, I haven't opened the product yet I was not part of the beta I have no inside uh, scoop uh, throughout the development of this particular version of the product so I'm gonna be seeing um, everything for the very first time I mean obviously I've seen the marketing and I've taken a look at uh, a lot of the materials that have been released on the forums and uh, YouTube and things of that nature. But um, guys, if you want to talk to me, um, join the uh, chat over on the face on the on on the uh, YouTube channel. Um, I'm not going to be answering your uh, messenger posts right now. So uh, come on over to the chat room over on uh, YouTube and uh send me your questions there i've got about four people sending me uh questions through facebook um uh now come on over guys uh come on over to the the youtube if you uh, want me to answer your stuff while i'm on the air um okay so what do we have here um let's see here so i mean looks like i have it installed but i did get that one error about the plugin so um, keep in mind that I am installing the trial. I guess this would be everybody's first um, uh, experience with it unless you just flat out went and um, bought some of these packs uh, that granted you the free upgrade. So, um, oh, it's opening up in the second monitor. So what I'm looking at right now is the, the uh, little screen thing. So... It says uh, Cartoon Animator 4. It says that I have 30 days left. So whenever they give you a 30-day trial, most companies actually give you full uh, usage of the software. I'm hoping that that's the only limitation um, because that's going to allow me to really demo this thing as it's intended. Uh, uh, in the past... Uh, uh, basically, they've crippled a lot of the functionality, like the ability to save and things like that. Uh, let's see. Let's close this uh, screen thing and move it down to the second monitor. Early bird special, save 40% on Cartoon Animator today. Hey, you know what? Just might do it. Uh, give me a moment to take a look at it. So I'm going to move that out of the way. And... Um, here it is, uh, Cartoon Animator 4. It looks exactly like Crazy Talk Animator 3. So I guess that's a good thing in a way. I mean, it's an ugly user interface that I never liked to begin with. Um, These little generic icons and stuff that if you're not uh, used to the software and the placement and stuff uh, it can be pretty confusing as to what's what and it's just not really pr pretty I mean the user interface can definitely use an overhaul and uh, quite frankly um, it's one of those things that you kind of expect on a major release you know something that that's not so cryptic 
uh, that should have definitely been one of the areas of focus for Reillusion uh, when it came to Crazy Dog Animator 4. So no user interface changes as far as I can tell. Uh, menu system still pretty much looks the same. Uh, we got the G3 Freebone Actor stuff. Uh, that's good. Uh, what's in here? Mm, okay, that's all good. It's pretty much Crazy Talk Animator 3 so far, so that's good. I mean, at least uh, it's consistent with the past. So if you're coming uh, in from Crazy Talk Animator 3, uh, hypothetically, you should be able to just kind of pick up uh, where you left off and just keep going from there. So that looks good. Let's take a look at the content manager and see what all we can see. Now, I did install it on my F drive. Uh, so if if consistency stays the same, then it should have also picked up my template uh, folder and all that stuff. So all my content from Crazy Talk Animator 2 and 3 should also be in here uh, unless they did something wacky where they prevented that. And not necessarily wacky. I mean, sometimes there's um, uh, technical incompatibilities. That's probably a better idea to keep things separated. Um, so, okay, projects. So we have some demo projects. We've got some learning uh, projects. I guess that's a link on that will download or something when I click on that. we got our blank templates. Actors. Let's take a look at characters. G3, 360 heads. So, apparently, you... I, I, apparently you had G3 characters with 360 heads, so that's uh, that's interesting. Uh, wait, there's no G4 characters. Um, I thought they were gonna have G4 characters. Um, I guess that makes sense. Uh, I mean, technically these are still the single-sided G3 characters. Uh, so uh, kudos, kudos for keeping it real, guys. Uh, uh, I'm actually, I actually like that. I, I like the fact that you did not falsely uh, represent the fact that the characters themselves are not being fully upgraded, but instead uh, it's just the head. So yes, yes, kudos. That's, that's really good, guys. I, I like that. That's very, um, I don't know what the word is. That's um, it's very gentlemanly of you to have kept the name consistent with what it really is and just adding on to it that's kind of what they did with um uh g2 and g2 plus characters uh in the last version uh where technically there wasn't any real improvements to the bodies themselves but the facial stuff was uh improved to allow for better motion capture and uh more like tweened movements you know of the expressions so i like the fact that they called it a g2 plus character uh basically because it was just like a minor upgrade to the g2 system so okay so we have uh g3 characters with 360 heads and uh, uh yeah language is going to get a little bit tricky because you got you know 360 which implies all around but then we, we get into 90 degree angles and you know front angles and stuff <laughs> so all right so i'm assuming these are the, the traditional g3 characters without the 360 uh, heads and uh, i never really got to work too much with these during the last version so last version was mostly wasted on me not quite i did benefit a lot from the g2 plus stuff uh, especially towards the end, the last uh, few months when I finally broke down and got that uh, motion capture stuff for the face, um, I started using that um, and didn't get to use it professionally yet, but I see a lot of potential for it and uh, I finally got to use it. Um, otherwise, I think uh, the last version, I, for my personal usage, I probably could have skipped it. Uh, we did use it a lot on the Batman uh, show. Um, some of the characters, like uh, the purple Joker, he had like some kind of trench coat, and uh, uh, there was no choice but to animate him as a G3 character. Uh, so we, we did get to use that a little bit. Um, 
All right, so I'm not gonna grab these yet. Miscellaneous elastic females grim reaper. Sandy. All right. I like the little icon. I guess that that that's the 360 icon. A little bit of a misrepresentation because again, it's we're only dealing with the head. Or I don't know. Maybe there's some kind of funky workaround to get the bodies to also have a little bit of a tweening thing, even if it's not 360. You know. I'm uh I'm just speculating here, but oh, wouldn't that be fucking cool? Um, all right, let's go to the animation stuff. Let's see what we have in there. Motion underscore G threes human Turner's female front and side Turner's. Did they mean turns? Ah, okay. And uh, elastic folks front. This la uh, these are very familiar. I think these are kind of the same thing from last time around. Um let's see here. I'm pretty sure there's nothing new in under G2. I'm not gonna spend too much time with that. Nah, it's all the same stuff. Uh perform. Here we go. We got some performance files for the new G3 uh 360 characters. I love the fact that they did not call these G4. That would have sucked. I would have gone on this crazy, crazy, crazy like head trip, you know, where trying to make sense of it. Uh, I love it. I love the fact that they did not call these G4 characters. There was a lot of uh, talk about this in the uh, the users group over on Facebook, and uh, they were often being referred to G4 characters. Thank you, Reillusion. Jeez, that's freaking awesome. This is definitely... Because, you know, whenever G4 characters really do come out, I would love for those G4 characters to really be an improvement overall of the character and actually be a full generation improvement, not just uh, the head or not just the eyes or whatever. Um, let's see here. Let's close this. Let's take a look. All right. Um, yeah, I'm not going to respond to you guys over Facebook, guys. I'm uh, kind of preoccupied. But um, I, I did see some comments in here about other people who are already having trouble installing it. Um, I didn't have any problems installing it so far. Uh, I did get that error. I don't know what it means. Um, but as I start playing with this, I guess we'll find out. Okay, so right off the bat, obviously, we still do not have any drawing tools. And it's kind of, it's probably a good thing, too, because even if we did, I don't think they would be as advanced as the tools that are available in Photoshop or Flash uh, or Illustrator or anything else. You know, uh, you look at programs like uh, Moho, um, and uh, they have built-in drawing tools, but those drawing tools just flat out suck. You know, if you want to do anything like really substantial in that program, you still have to go outside and draw using Photoshop or Flash or Illustrator or something and import those drawings. So um, it's kind of a good thing. I'm happy that, I mean, it still doesn't have drawing tools because I, I know that within one generation of the software, I don't think that would be enough for Reillusion to perfect uh, those drawing tools. Although it would be really nice at some point to be able to draw and create all the assets from scratch within the program as opposed to having to use supplemental tools. Uh, but I'm happy to do it because those supplemental tools are a million times more powerful. So I would, you know, I would choose that over anything right now. Um, okay, so what do we do first, guys? Um, well, let's take a look at some scenes. Are there any new scenes that we can... Yeah, same stuff. So there's nothing new there in terms of uh, scenes. Uh, if you guys hear something that sounds like a pterodactyl in the background, I recently uh, got a macaw that I in inherited from my mother. And uh, she is loud. So... Uh, Got a new baby in the house, and she is annoying and loud and very, very, very uh, angry. She's an angry bird. <laughs> that is not just a clever name. Um, 
objects. All this stuff is uh, stuff that you know we've seen in Crazy Talk Animator 3 or below. Uh, you know, this is one of the things that uh, I've always uh, asked about. Uh, these are really awesome, okay? I love these. You can go in here and, uh, you know, uh, change the text and create your own thing. These are freaking beautiful. There's so much potential behind these props. And, um, and they've been available since at least Crazy Talk Animator 2. I am willing to bet that even now with Cartoon Animator 4, there is not a piece of documentation that, that explains how to make these. Can you imagine being able to like create generic t-shirts or things with logos for your customers where you could just go in here and change the text? I mean, the only way to use these is to use Real Illusions versions. Uh, it kind of sucks. I asked uh, one time uh, one of the guys there, I'm not going to say his name, but basically his response was, I think they make them with, um, with uh, QT. <laughs> that doesn't help me. But uh, these little uh, things, these uh, uh, like speech bubbles and things, and there's a lot of potential here. I have a feeling that they're props created with uh, ActionScript 2 and Flash, but uh, I've never been able to figure it out. There's no documentation, but whoever can figure this out, man, that'd, that'd be doing the community a big favor because uh, these type of things, imagine like if your character has a t-shirt, go in there, just change the wording on the t-shirt. Freaking awesome. Uh, put logos on your backgrounds, you know, change change the, the signage and stuff. Um, okay, so I'm gonna get rid of that. Uh, I'm pretty sure there is uh, there's no documentation yet on these. I'm gonna look into it further once I go along. Uh, let's see here. Uh, hi, Addy. Hi, Dirk. Uh, how are you guys doing? Uh, let's see. Seems they added a new angle to G3 characters. Yeah. Let's take a look at what that angle is. Um, well, I mean, G3 characters have always had the ability to have pretty much any angle, to be fair. I mean, they're single-sided angles. And, uh, um, I mean, as long as you create whatever angle you want, you just... You know, you just make it happen. Um, unless you are talking about within the G3 itself. That would be awesome. I would be totally on board with that. Is that what it is? I mean, I know that's what you guys want to see right now, but I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of peeking through the stuff that I've already seen here. And uh, I want to make sure I... We all know about the turning head. We all know about, you know, some of the improvements to the G3 stuff so far. Uh, let's take a look at the stuff that we don't know yet. And um, basically, this is all stuff from the previous releases. Uh, if you guys know of anything that I might be missing that's new, that has nothing to do with the new G3 360 stuff, uh, let me know. Um, okay, I'm about to give up on it. Uh, let's see here. Entrance. What is this? Oh, okay, so these are your bouncy move things. Uh, yeah, these were these have been available for a while, unless there's some new uh, ones that have been added. I never used them, so I'm not entirely sure if there's any new ones or not. Uh, this is in kind of an area that I never go into here. SFX. There, there should be more SFX stuff. Yeah, this this. Um, Speech bubbles, man, that would be such an improvement to the software if they would document how they did these and uh, allow us to make our own because there's so much potential there. And uh, I think, I don't know how long those have been around, maybe since version. Uh, hi, Karen, how are you doing? Uh, so I don't know how long those have been around, but there would be a big help if we could create these ourselves. I mean, I. There's just so much potential, not just for speech bubbles, you know, for, like I said, T-shirts and signs and buildings and things like that. So, okay. Um, I think so far I don't see anything new. Um, I'm going to bring in one of these new 360 characters and let's see, see what we have here. Uh, who's going to win? Okay, so Adi says... 
Ibis uh, Ari says, Ibis, will there be any improvement in sight for G2? From Reillusion, probably not. From me, uh, yes, to a certain extent. I'm going to show you that in a minute, actually. Uh, thank you for asking that question because it's kind of something I wanted to demonstrate, but I don't want to take the focus away from, uh, from this thing. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, Kieran, we were just looking at that, and I was uh, just telling people about how I'm actually happy that they did not go with the G4 name for these characters because uh, technically it's not an overhaul uh, or it's not a new generation of a character. I mean, they improved the, the head, and um, but the G3 is still the same, so... I'm really happy that they did not try to pass it off as a new generation character. Let's do this front angle here. Um, five, six, seven, eight, ten. Took about 10, 11 seconds to load up. I can already see this character is a little bit blurry, and that's at 100% scale. Um, this character is definitely not vector. As soon as I start zooming in on it, I have a feeling it's going to get even blurrier. No, it's actually rendering okay. Okay, I proved myself wrong. That's good. Then again, it is a simple character, you know, it's a vector style character, flat shades and stuff. So it's going to require a little bit more looking into, but there we go. Yeah. I can get away with about that much before she starts looking like crap. Let's see here. Yeah. See all the pixelation and blurriness? Now, interesting though, at 100% scale, she already looked blurry. Yeah. Okay, so definitely no vector there, but um, I think that I expected that. Um, when we select the character, let's see what becomes enabled. We got some options here. Sprite editor, face puppet, 2D motion key editor, face key editor, layer editor. Okay. Of course, we have our composer, G3 free bone actor. I don't, I don't know why we need that. Um, with th with this guy selected. Um. Render style, be well, no, I think that one becomes available anyways. That would be interesting, though, if they come up with a way to, nah. That was uh, wishful thinking. <laughs> uh, that was wishful thinking to expect that uh, render style was going to be implemented in these things. Um, okay. Uh, let's see here. There's nothing new in characters except 360. Yeah, yeah uh, so far, that's kind of what we're looking at. Uh, Adi mentioned and uh, Dirk also said that there were some new angles added to characters. Uh, I'm assuming they're speaking about the default angles that they're providing because in the last version they had uh, just a front and like a 45 degree or something. I don't remember very well. I, I never made full use of these characters. Um, but it would be cool if these angles were all inclusive as part of the same character. I mean, I don't mind it. You know, it's... It is what it is. Uh, a lot of times you don't want that sprite switching to be taking place anyways, but but the convenience factor alone, I mean, and the economic factor alone too, from a, from a hobbyist perspective, you're paying $10 per front angle, $10 per side angle, $10 for 45 degree angle. And then um, the developer goes and changes the costumes, changes the colors, changes the hair a little bit. And then charges you another thirty dollars, so that's kind of a not very cost efficient uh, for a hobbyist or you know or amateur person to be investing in these type of things. Whereas the G two characters, you know, you just change around body sprites and mix and match hairdos and uh, pay ten dollars for the whole thing, and you know you got yourself a very very uh, versatile character. Um, so that's that, I think that's one of the things that people aren't really looking at. Um, all right, so let's uh, double click here. Let's take a look at, uh, yeah, 
They added 90 degrees. Yep, they did. Uh, it looks like they added it as a, an additional angle, though. So, I mean, technically, that's something that we could have done ourselves at any time in uh, Crazy Talk Animator. Um, how did they make the skirt? Hey, let's take a look at that. She does have a skirt, doesn't she? Well, you know what? She's probably a Freebone character. <laughs> Freebone characters can do that. Um, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's, uh, let's, let's go for the obvious one. I guess the face puppet. No, this is the traditional face puppet. There's something new here. Okay, we'll press space. Oh, that is cute. Some sprite switching there, which is jarring, but it recognizes that it's turning so that's serviceable you can do stuff with that i mean i would have probably drawn that differently to keep that from being that jarring then again you know in an actual animation you know you, you probably won't notice it because you know da la 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 oh see you don't even notice it so that's uh um no it's palazzo what is that I've never uh, explained Palazzo. Or is that the name of the skirt, Palazzo? Okay, so it's a broad pant. Oh, okay. Ah, okay, yeah, so that, that you could probably handle that too, because that, that's always been doable, even with G2 characters. Uh, you know what? That nose is not bad. I mean, when you're actually doing it in real time with the motions and stuff, um, it you can do with the sprite switch. It's it's barely noticeable. And if you add an extra keyframe in there, I'm sure there's uh, the the uh, the little transform tool, the little uh, deform tool that you can use to make a little blur there and just kind of blend that. So th yeah, that's definitely serviceable. Up down. Um, yeah, you know, that's kind of consistent with what Flash does, um, where it doesn't quite keep the, keep uh, what we call in model, like notice here, there's some kind of masking thing taking place where this is not really warping or bending in 3D, it's just kind of being slid over, but being masked. Uh, so it's, it's kind of unnatural. It, uh, I don't know. But it gets the job done. Uh, it 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 definitely worked. I like the, I like this part right here. There's some kind of warping taking place under the eyes, where when you're looking at it down, they they took their time figuring that out uh, to make it look like the cheeks are are overlapping the eyes and stuff. Uh, that's cool. I wish they would have done that on the actual facial shape too, because. The face is not changing. When a character is looking up, the chin would be right here, and this would kind of blend in with the neck. So that that is not very good. Um, but it's serviceable, you know. Just kind of do it quickly. Don't let people notice it, and you'll be okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I don't know. Uh, it it, it kind of is cheating, but not really. I mean, that's kind of the way it's always been done. <laughs> uh, that was our workaround. Uh, I wish they would, you know, I don't know why they need to do that. Because with G3 characters, uh, you can do the pins and stuff. You can do skirts and have those skirts kind of be attached to this thing. And it'll still work. Um, all right, let's take a look at some of this other stuff. So... It's probably unnecessary to have done it that way for them. Uh, let's try this. I definitely like the the facial expressions, the the face, the deformations and stuff. Okay, so ah oh man, it's a really nice feature. Um, so far, what I've seen, though, does this really warrant a full version number release? 
I mean, what have they improved in Crazy Talk itself that warrants this being a 4.0 version as opposed to 3.5? Oh, yeah, they changed the name. Um, hmm. Let's take a look under the hood. Um, let's go into composer mode real quick. And... Uh, Okay, right thigh, left thigh, torso. Kind of take a look at the. Hmm. And expressions could be given from normal webcam. Is that uh, as part of the default software, uh, Kieran? Or is that with that uh, plugin that they're going to be doing? So, okay. All right. Face 2D and face 3D. No. Yeah. That's kind of what I thought. Um, well, you can do it for free with Crazy Talk Animator 2. I wonder if you can do the facial capture with Crazy Talk Animator 2, save the facial animation, import it, I mean, uh, Crazy Talk Animator 3, save it, and import it into Crazy Talk Animator 4. That'll probably avoid having to buy the plugin. But I don't know. I don't know. I, we have to take a look at it. Because, uh, we, they have to have something. They can't just remove functionality and charge you for it in the next version that that, that would be stupid um, okay so let's see here I'm assuming this is to launch in all right let me launch Photoshop that way it doesn't take that long to uh, launch whenever I try to communicate with it PSD, I'm assuming that's going to take the entire template and uh, bring it in. What is this? Custom rig GUI. Okay. So this is new. Mm. What is this? Facial animation setup. This is for the G2 Plus stuff. This this is available on Crazy Talk Animator 3, where you get the basic facial gestures. Three noses. Okay, so this is basically a, a G2 plus head for this part. So all of this is available in uh, Crazy Talk Animator 3. Uh, they just call it a G2 plus uh, head. Check the last button. Uh, okay. Let's see. Upper body puppet also from webcam. I heard about the, uh, oh, I don't know. I heard, uh, unless there's something else, um, the, the triggers thing where you can, with the facial capture for the live stuff, um, that you'll be able to do triggers and stuff. But I, I heard that's, that's not till like, you know, another six months to a year from now. Um, what is this? Custom rig capture? Load in capture? Like a screen capture? I just clicked that button. It didn't do anything. Oh! It captured an image from here, brought it in here, and I'm assuming it allows you to put bones on it. 
Dude, that could be a, you know, when you need to get like a, like a nice little, like a quick angle or whatever, you draw your character on paper or Photoshop or whatever. I could see that working. Um, okay. Load image. I'm assuming that's from, I don't have any, oh, hang on. I might, I might have something. Sticks not working. Control minus. There we go. Um, yeah, I'm working on a new uh, a new modification to the G2 format where the neck doesn't actually bend here, but instead it's kind of invisible and kind of it bends up there. It's it's like a weird neck, and uh, the mouth is actually inside of the head so that the teeth don't move when she talks and stuff like that. That's gonna make things look very Disney esque. Uh, in terms of speech, um, I'm still experimenting with that, but that's not what I'm why I did this. Let me see if I can export a picture of this character and rig them up, rig her up. Uh, get rid of all this so make it as easy as possible. All right, I'll just leave those pivot points there. Um, maybe get rid of these. Let's see if that works. I mean, maybe I'm supposed to draw them like this, though. I don't know. Uh, let's just see what happens, you know? Uh, Control Alt Shift S. Export it as a PNG, I'm assuming. And we'll choose minimum area. And then we are going to try to load that image. If I can find it, there it is. There she is, okay. Um, okay, so another thing we gotta find out is, do does the image have to be a certain proportion because it just brought this image and it kind of squeezed her in. Uh, it's not the right proportions. Um, I'm not going to worry about that. Well, that's something we're going to have to, you know, ask Real Illusion about and find out. Well, it's a good thing I left the pivot points marked there. So let's. Uh, that could be a really useful tool. All right, now I can already see an improvement that's needed here because this is a bipedal character. Why can't I just do one side and mirror everything and have it do the other side? That would have saved about 30 seconds of my life. And... This is on the center, I guess, so I'm going to bring that there. And what is this? Is that the neck? Oh, come on. You know, this, maybe I'm doing it wrong. Let me see. I was about to say that this, this needs to be resized to make it easier to grab stuff. Okay, yeah, it does need to be, yeah, this sucks. All right, you just gotta, I guess, best, best, you know, take your best shot with it. Uh, if you're trying to get accuracy, um, probably not gonna happen. You only have this little tiny window to work with. But so far, that was relatively fast. What is all these points? Toe, is that the nub? What is this? Okay. Man, this is, okay, this is a little bit impractical. It's, oh man, it's, it's kind of fucked up and beautiful at the same time. 
because I just, I think I just rigged the character. I don't know yet, but getting in here and trying to be accurate or moving around, you can't, let me see, if you press space and drag, no, you can't drag the character around. The scroll wheel does not zoom in and out. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I guess it's just kind of like a, a best guess scenario here. Uh, so now what? Okay, fuck. I see a reset button, but I don't see like an apply button. Uh, I don't see, uh, okay, load image is what allowed me to bring the image in. Capture is what captured the image from here and brought it in here. And my gut tells me that if I push reset, it's going to remove everything and reset me back to zero. So how the hell do I get this character in here? Or did I just miss... <laughs> uh, I misinterpreted the whole thing. I was like, holy crap, this is a cool feature. All right. I have no other button to press. I mean, I could press the close button. I'm going to press this reset button, and maybe maybe it's just mislabeled. Maybe they just, you know. I mean, I can see why they need a reset button, you know, in case you just screw up and want to start over. But reset. <sighs> Am I missing a button somewhere? I don't want to click it yet. <laughs> um, maybe click outside real quick. No. All right. Here we go. Fuck. <laughs> oh, man. I got my hopes up for nothing. I, I totally thought that... Okay, well, I mean... Create custom rig. This is the panel that should allow you to create a custom rig. Am I somehow misinterpreting this? What am I doing? I will. I'll check the 3D head creation thing in a minute. I mean, uh, <laughs> oh my God, what is this? Okay, capture brings that image in. Okay, that's logical. Load will load an image. That's also logical. And we go through the process. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to waste any more time on that. But assuming that we went through the process, there's no button to apply our custom rig. What the hell? Oh shit, you know what? Let me try something one more time. Maybe I just have to close the panel. Blah, 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 we did, we did it. Close it, it doesn't update. All right, that's a completely useless feature. I have no idea what it's for. I mean, I can read what I think it's supposed to be for, I played around with it. It seemed like it was going to be such a cool little feature. But there's no way to actually apply your custom rig. I, there's got to be something I'm missing. I'm going to have to go back to the, through the manual once I'm done with this. Um, but that could be very useful. I mean, imagine just being able to draw, draw your character in whatever angle you need it to be, you know? Um... Try taking your pick on the stage and then go in and check if custom rig applies. Taking your pick on the st like uh, like just bring it in and kind of like a prop type of thing. Okay. View show desktop icons and. Drag and drop, free bone character. We'll close it, we'll select her. Oh wait, I'm already in here. 
press capture to okay I can see this might actually work but why the hell would it give me a choice to upload an image um, where's the bones What the fuck, dude? <laughs> I have a feeling I have to do everything manually at the bones out here. Oh my god, it does not need to be this unintuitive. It, it was it was going so good. I really don't want to go through all this work if it's not even going to work. I'm kind of scared to just mess around with this now. Fuck. This thing's in the way. All right. I have a feeling I added an extra bone that doesn't need to be there. Damn it. I think that's how it's done. I don't know. Oh, um, I'll just do it like that. I think I'm missing another one. I'll just put it there. Let's see what happens now. I add bone or remove will reset snapshot data. No, don't reset it. Or what? I don't know. I don't know what that was. All right, let's go in here now. Capture. Okay, we have our bones in here. That is so crazy. Why wouldn't they just put the bones there or allow me to use the other one as a starting point? That's, that's unnecessarily like counterproductive. I mean, what, what, why the hell do I need this? I already did it here. I'm missing something, right? I mean, at this point, at this point, why the hell do I need this, this user interface? I already did the work out here, right? I mean, I know I'm not tripping. Am I tripping? There's got to be something, man. There's got to be something else to this. It it's, it's, can't be that dumb. They, they, they're just missing out an apply button. That's all there is. They, 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 they rushed it out into release, and they kind of, they kind of just had like a little oops moment. That, that's all. I'm pretty sure that's all it is, man. Uh, give it a couple of weeks, they'll they'll release an update. I'm sure. Uh, okay, so let's. Uh, <laughs> they were putting all their effort on that damn 360 head. Um, okay, let's see what happens. Well, let me go back to one of theirs. I mean, my my stuff is all screwed up. I don't. That's not fair to them. Um, Adi says it's probably because it's the trial version. I don't know. You know what? The trial versions of Reillusion traditionally do not let you save the file. But this thing literally has a 30 day trial. And traditionally, whenever that happens, um, it does let you uh, save. So here it is. I was able to save my project. So so based on that i can make a guess and say that it's probably fully functional so 
I don't think I haven't run into anything that seems crippled yet. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna select her, go back into composer mode. Okay, cool. Thank you for clarifying that, Karen. Did you buy that today as well, or did you have like a pre-ordered or something? Ah, okay. I'm probably going to be buying my copy sometime within the next three or four days. I, I wanted to just kind of play around for it. Yeah. Did you also get the plugins that come with it? Uh, yeah, because there was some. There was a lot of people who bought like the bundles and stuff. Uh, I wonder if they just got the uh, the upgrade to the program itself, and you you're still made to buy the the separate plugins. I've kept them in my cart. Okay. Okay, so they didn't give you the the, the actual the, the plugins that come with it. All right, well that's good to know too. So, oh that sucks. That really sucks. Um, it's kind of something I, I probably should probably talk about a little bit later, and not right now. Um, let's take a look at the 360 head creator. This thing is obviously already rigged. Okay, I'm clicking on stuff. Oh, hero. Who's a pretty boy? So you click on here, and I'm assuming this allows you to adjust the positions of what the character should look like when he, they're looking that way or that way. Let me hide these bones. Now the cool thing about this is that it does have, at least they thought about uh, sprite replacement uh, between certain sprites, or at least the nose, that's the only one I've noticed it with. So nose, front view, side view. And I'm assuming at some point that nose is gonna flip or transform when it gets past a certain threshold. Um, do they have a up nose? Is that the same nose? I hope they have the mechanics for it because it would suck that we're stuck with their idea of what a nose should look like when she's looking up. Uh, personally, I would probably add nostrils to this nose when she's looking up. So let's hope at least they have the mechanics for it so that we can make our own custom stuff that way. Um, let's see here, bottom nose. See how, okay, so the arrangement of the, I mean, that's fine. This is stuff that can be done in Flash easily. You know, I actually wrote about this about 20 years ago on how to do this stuff in Flash. It's kind of one of the things that pissed me off about this thing that I had a problem with. Um, this is like 20 year old stuff, you know, that, that I went through uh, a while back and was teaching people how to do about 20 years ago in Flash. And it's a very simple technique uh, and they're just now bringing it out and passing it off as something new and innovative. Um, I don't like this facial shape. When the head is looking down, your face should deform. Um, will it allow me to somehow do that? I know I can, no, maybe not. But not without taking the rest of the head with me. Just hold down control, hold down out. You hold down control alt while doing it. Nope. Shift. No. The rest of the bodies, uh, the, the sprites are, are locked in. Let's try this deform function. Okay. This, yeah, <laughs> we thought about the same thing at the same time. Um, okay, this is serviceable. Something like this would be a little bit more accurate. 
And I guess we could take this hair. Three, three, two. Okay, that's the grid size. Tuck that hair in a little bit. Something like this would probably be a little bit more accurate. Is there a test function? What is this? No way. That's actually kind of cool. I think if it is what I think it is, I'm assuming that these plus little points are probably allowing you to create new uh, keyframes to have more accuracy. That's pretty freaking cool. Yes. Yes. Okay. And then when you get, what, where, where'd this one go? I guess because you already have it, maybe. go back how do we go back and now we have these uh, they put a lot of work into this head man I, I can see why they think it's a completely like worthy of a full upgrade but honestly they could have just released like a 3.5 charge for the upgrade I mean it doesn't have to be a major release uh, it's just an upgrade to the G3 format. A really good fucking upgrade. I like the fact that they did not limit themselves to just those nine points. Uh, that if I wanted to, based on the intricacy of my character, I can probably create more elaborate stuff. Especially with uh, when dealing with some of these sprite switches, I'm sure that... Um, yeah, they probably should. I mean, I think they could easily integrate uh, Character Creator um, and ha give it like an export function to export uh, complete uh, G2 and, and uh, G3 uh, character templates directly out of Character Creator. Uh, even if you're not using the characters themselves, you know, because they have that 3D, that ugly 3D D look. But uh, with Character Creator, I mean, it's their tool. All I have to do is add a couple of cameras and, and views to it. And, you know, you build your character any way you like. Hit the export button. And it builds you an XFL file, which is basically a Flash file that's kind of open source. And imports it into Flash. Export it back as an SWF template. And, and you can modify it any way you want. Replace the sprites with your own character, you know. That would be freaking cool. They have the technology. I mean, if they're not doing it, it's because they just flat out don't want to. <laughs> But uh, as they have the tools and the technology. I mean, uh, there's really nothing stopping them from doing it. Um, I, I like this. This is cool. Okay, so what's this button? Wait. What does wait do? How like the strength of the warping maybe? What is that? I'm clicking around. It doesn't seem to do anything. That's going to require more reading. Like, wait, is that like um, if she turns her head up, is there like some kind of a dampening thing on those keyframes to, to, so that they don't, they don't animate as fast? Maybe there's a delay. That could create a bit of like a parallax thing where it's like, okay, I'm lifting my head up and then the front hair kind of follows through. If it is that, that's freaking cool. If that's what it is. I don't know. That's going to require some reading. But um, I hope that's what it is. I mean, I really don't see any options like controlling that weight. Mask to view. What is this? Mm. Oh, wait. There's a preview button here. It's terrible. I mean, I can see what they're going for, but it's fucking ugly. 
It's just flat right there. No, there's no reason why it should. No se ve la cara del perfil ahí. No, I mean, there's really no reason why it should from a technical perspective. Uh, there's really no logical way of making a full 360 head like this. I, I, I have a feeling they, they're doing some kind of uh, wacky uh, combination between the front angle and side angle thing, but there's really no reason to believe that I should be able to like spin my head around like this. I mean, you really wouldn't want to anyways, realistically. I don't know. There's going to be that one guy who's doing the... Um, Oh my God, that's kind of ugly. Look, look, at, look at how that back hair is just kind of tumbling around all crazy. That is not in model. In model, I mean, for those of you who don't do this professionally, it basically means uh, it doesn't look the same. You know, when you try to draw anime characters for TV, um, Oh, in the view. <laughs> Thanks. Um, when 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 you do things for TV, you gotta keep your character in model, make it look the same from every angle, so that he looks consistent. So like this character, she's looking this way here. You see how those those lines are behind the ear. So basically, when she's here, those two lines should still be consistently behind that ear in order for her to look realistic. But see how they're just sliding behind her head. It's just, I mean, I can see what they're going for. It, it's really cool, but damn, that's going to cost some kind of, I mean, when you create your own original characters, I guess you got to watch out for that stuff, you know, create it in a way that you don't have those type of lines because that is just too obvious. Look at that. It's just like, it's like a spinning globe or some shit. I don't like it. <laughs> There's no consistency behind it. Uh, mm, it's cute. I mean, overall, I like it, but, you know, I'm being nitpicky. Uh, how do I get out of here? Uh, preview on, reset, clear, um, copy, paste. Why would this be here? If I hit copy, can I? there okay to save you some time in the warping okay all right that's why that's there makes sense average mean between two points what happens here I don't get it Okay, so basically I take this point and then select that one and then click on that again. And then I click a third one and the third one is going to give me whatever's in between these two, but it's going to give it to me over there or over there. That's stupid. I don't need it there. I need it here. That's just dumb. At least we have a reset button. Okay. All right, what is this? Onion layer. Okay, that's something that they should have been implementing down on the timeline itself for a long time now. That's uh, basically allows you to see the two keyframes so that you can kind of select the middle one that's pretty obvious I mean if you've been doing animation for a while you pretty much know what an onion skin is it allows you to create an, an in-between between the two points but oh, okay so this should be way up here okay no it's good that's good I mean 
All right, so let's see what else we got. Quick head turn setup. That, I'm assuming that just allows you to kind of move crap around. I can see that. See, look at this. I mean, an eye would not look like that from that angle. This eye would be smaller and it would have like a different angle. I mean, it does the trick. I mean, don't get me wrong. But it's severely limiting. It's just very Picasso esque. I can't wait to try this in some of my original characters. Maximum angle. You can go all the way to the side if you wanted to, really, apparently. So, uh, 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 Ariel, that's uh, it's kind of what you were asking about. So, all right, so, so far I haven't seen a 360 head. I've seen a 180 head, okay? Let's just, let's just put that out there. <laughs> so, let's see here. I am a sucker for accuracy and advertising, guys. Marketing. If you're going to market the hell out of something, um, don't. there's no need to fool the audience, to fool your user base. I mean, it's a pretty good product either way. Um, I don't know about all that. Um, I mean, animators can see at least, a, I don't know, seven other tools that are a lot more efficient for doing this type of thing. But um, I mean, I use Crazy Talk Animator because of the G2 characters. It's something that other tools can't do, still can't do. And that's like, Jesus, two versions into it. G Crazy Talk 3, Great Cartoon Animator 4. And there's still not a tool out there that can do what G2 characters can do. Uh, so that's why I personally use it as an animator. Um, <clears throat> what can we do with this character? Let's do uh, the motion key editor. What the hell? What the hell is this? <laughs> what am I doing? I think I screwed something up at some point when I was messing with this earlier. All right, let's ignore that. Okay. Please tell me at least I can switch those sprites because that is not pretty. Keep bend direction, stretch bone, keep end effector angle. Let's see what happens. I don't know. I don't, I don't understand. I'm sure I will at some point. I mean, stretching bones is something that could always be done, right? I don't remember. Constra constraints. Okay, I see. So it's constraining. It's not just a clever name. It really does do that. I just hit Control S. Okay, so it's saved. I was trying to do Control Z. And effector rotation. 
that's gonna take some playing around with all right so please tell me that I can use multiple sprites yeah really I was about to say this is really bad design but no they got they got some of the necessary sprites in there never mind let's see these are a little bit more consistent with this angle I mean that's very unnatural with that angle that's definitely not a natural sprite okay so at least we can switch sprites so that's good um you know technically if these allow you to have multiple sprites you can still have the illusion of other angles at least for the limbs <laughs> this preview thing i have a feeling that's that's the only thing that we were able to change with that um uh, okay completely unnecessary but i think i figured out i mean my expectations versus what it really does um this tool here allows you To create a custom rig it doesn't allow you to rig a custom character <laughs> it basically allows you to screw around with this so that when you do go and use it and load it up in the animator you have some shit that looks like that. That is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. It got my hopes up for no reason. Um, um, <clears throat> that is a completely unnecessary feature. I had to go through all that just so I can have an image of my own custom character for my user interface. I mean, I can see that some people might want to add like text to their user interface here, like, you know, rotate, blah, 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 or name their bones. But is it really, is it really like something that we need? Is it useful? Is it improving our thing? The ability to change this picture and having to go through the composer in order to do that. That is... Oh my god, dude, I, I was looking at that completely wrong. And uh, I, I gotta admit, I mean, my, my panties got wet for a minute there when I saw like, okay, I can load a picture and just quickly use their default thing to rig a custom character. That's gonna be a game changer, okay? That is definitely gonna be a game changer. I figured maybe in a week or two they'll release an update uh, with a bug fix, you know, click that apply button. Um, but that's all it is. It just allows you to add a picture to the 2D motion editor so you can have that. They advertised as auto rigging. Um, I think that's with the face. That's what we were looking at earlier. Um, or maybe I'm just looking in a different section, but that particular thing only allowed you to customize the user interface. to a certain extent okay so let's uh, let's bring in some of these other guys I mean I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're all the same uh, this is a cute one let's do this angle I've seen her in the, the video demos Uh, 
let me delete her and take a look at something. Characters are unnecessarily huge too. If you notice, I mean, this is a pretty good uh, computer. You know, it's pretty, pretty processor heavy, and uh, lots of RAM, 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, for a character to take up to 10 seconds to load like that, just means that it's really bogged down. Uh, a lot of raster art just kind of piled on. Um, sizes, they seem to be pretty consistent um, let's try something movement okay, let's try the sad <laughs> but I just can't so let's say you spent uh, you know two or three hours creating that uh, animation because I mean, there's no motion capture, uh, there's no uh, VBH format conversion or any way of converting like prefab motions. Uh, so you pretty much have to animate everything manually. So let's pretend that we took uh, two or three hours to create this little perform sequence, probably a little bit longer. Um, and we're working with a team. The team is working with a dummy character because the real character is still being in the pipeline somewhere being developed okay that character has now been developed they're ready to bring in yes to G2 characters uh, they can but that's a feature of Crazy Talk Animator 2 so that's not really new and, uh, and it was crippled in Crazy Talk Animator 3 um, there was a there, there was some crippling done there, so not all uh, iClone motions work. Um, later on, they uh, they were able to bring in back some of those motions with the RL uh, motion format. But uh, but yeah, G two characters. I mean, honestly, I mean, so far I I'm still with with the idea that the G two characters are the most advanced uh, generation of characters that Reillusion has put out there. They're not giving them enough focus. Uh, this 3D head thing on a G2 character would have been an amazing freaking upgrade. Okay. Uh, which is still something I need to experiment on because traditionally most of these heads are interchangeable. So that's the other thing I want to try. See if you can export a head and just drop it onto a G2 character. If that's possible, boom. That is where your... 4.0 deserves its uh, its um, its uh, its major release upgrade. Okay, so okay, so I created this animation, spent three four hours working on it. Then the development team has just come up with with the final version of this character. I'm about to drop it in there. So let's see if we're able to replace our character. Um, let's bring in this guy. Normally, on a G2, all you have to do is drop them on top of the character. Let's see what happens. No. Mm. I will not eat green eggs and ham. Oh, wait. I fucked up. I get that was a motion. That was not a character. Damn it. Uh, let's see here. We need a character. Okay. We'll drop it in there. And we're replacing it with a different character. Probably should have done that 45 angle to be more fair. Use G3 for long shots and G3 for expressions. You mean G2s for long shots? Or G3 for long shots and uh, the close-up things for the, the new G, G3 360 things? Okay, you're going to have to explain that comment a little bit more. <laughs> the G2s for long shots and G3 for expressions. Um, 
Not necessarily. I mean, because G2 also has the G2 Plus thing, and it's really good for expressions. So if you just upgrade your G2 characters to the G2 Plus, keep all the same sprites so that you can still switch to those if needed, you can get some really good expressions on there. Um, yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, one of the things that I have always done, or the little times that I've done, is I've used the G2 characters for all, for all my primary stuff. Whenever there's an angle that I can't quite achieve, like a 95 degree angle, you know, a specific angle, or a 95 degree angle from above, something that cannot be done with a G2 character, that's when I turn that angle into a G3 character and use it just for that one shot. Uh, so that's the only times that I've ever actually used those. <laughs> wow, it's freaking amazing. No, the, I mean, all the all the eye motion stuff from uh, iClone 5 and below, they should all work. And uh, I have some tutorials on my website, ToonTitan.com, that'll teach you how to get um, uh, pretty much any motion capture file and convert it and make it compatible. Uh, so it looks like you can replace the character after the fact. So here was the original character. Let's say my development team or whatever was still putting the final touches on my character. I don't want to hold up production, so I'm using a dummy character for my main animation. <laughs> Now, granted, I did replace it with the wrong angle, but um, that was my bad. Uh, I'm going to bring this guy here. I'm going to replace it with a different character. So the underlining motion, uh, technically, I could have uh, a couple of animators just get started on the film, you know, get started on the production, work on the animation part of it, regardless of what the character looks like, as long as he has all the sprites that's needed. And then, at the same time, I could have uh, my character designers uh, just putting all the final tweaks on the characters and stuff. And whenever they have them ready to go, whenever they're done, um, I could drop the final versions of these characters on top of my, my, my work, my animated work, and just have it updated. That's a good time saver that's still able to do that. I think that's one of the things that was crippled in Crazy Talk Animator 3. It was perfectly possible in Crazy Talk Animator 2, but in Crazy Talk Animator 3, I think they crippled that. I mean, they might have fixed it or something, but uh, I remember it stopped working. Um, little things like that, but maybe some minor tweaks. Okay. So that's that's good. I mean, it's good that we can have the features back that we had in Crazy Talk Animator 2. I say that with the most ironical, uh, ironic um, intentions. Uh, this is good. At least we have this back. It, this brings back a little bit of productivity into the software. Um, what else can we take a look at, guys? Uh, I mean, honestly, I don't see anything that, to me, so far makes it worthy of the 4.0 upgrade uh, for them to call it you know a major release this is something that they did to a specific generation of character it's something that could have easily been just added on to crazy talk animator 3 which honestly i think that's what they did i mean the user interface is exactly the same um everything else is exactly the same so technically uh, you know, I'm pretty sure this is Crazy Talk Animated 3, just with an, an uh, you know, upgraded G3 character. Um, what else am I missing? What features are in here that, that we can say are new? Oh, wait, hey, 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 this is the trial version. And that's... Uh, Let's take a look at the facial mocap stuff. I hope we can take a look at the facial mocap stuff. Fuck, I just had a, a realization. 
a reillusion realization. I hope they did not cripple the facial mocap 100% because this is a free freaking feature. Not free, you paid for it in version 2. Or 3, I mean. Why the hell would you take away a core feature of the software, repackage it as an add-on plugin? Dude, what the fuck? I don't see the... I got the character selected. I don't see the little camera icon. Oh man, no, 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 no. That's, that's the kind of stuff that's worthy of getting pissed off there. Sorry guys, I love Reillusion. Um, I'm a major, major freaking advocate, evangelist, whatever you want to call it, for their product and their tool as a... No, uh, it has facial motion capture. I mean, not webcam capture. But it does have the facial motion capture uh, using the iPhone. Something that also I was opposed to because why would you want to go out and buy a thousand dollar tool just for that one feature? Uh, um, I, I, I kind of was opposed to it, but but from a prof professional standpoint, if you're doing this type of work professionally, you know what? You know the. The perception neuron suit will cost you about fifteen hundred dollars, and you're gonna pay for it because it's gonna improve your workflow. So fine, you know it's an expense. You know you pay for it; it's an expense for your. It's you're gonna get a return on your investment quick. Uh, so even with the facial stuff, I was opposed to it. Uh, you know, having to go out and buy a thousand dollar phone just so you can try something. You know, like the facial thing, and. Uh, I understand it from a professional standpoint buy it it's worth it but it is a core um, it, it's a core function yes yes that's I mean Adi that's that's basically what we're seeing I mean I I had read the marketing that uh, the webcam stuff is gonna be a separate plugin you have to buy your part but why the fuck would you remove a functional core tool okay it doesn't matter how it was done i never agreed with the whole you know using the iphones exclusively thing i started using it i like it but i never agreed with it because it's another thousand dollars that you have to invest in it but as a professional you make your money back so it, okay it's fine but it was a core function so let's take a look at a character in Crazy Talk Animator 3. And let's compare. Here, we'll use one of my own custom ones, if I can find one. Here it is. We'll use Kevin. And <laughs> no shit. <laughs> of course. You know, one of my rules, and this is kind of a rule that I broke since the beginning with Reillusion, is never trust a company that will purposefully cripple their software into multiple versions. Like, uh, you know, uh, the bronze, the silver, and the gold version or whatever. Uh, even Adobe did this for a little while with Flash. They tried it, man. They had a major backlash. Um, they had Flash Pro and Flash, you know, normal or whatever. Um but I've never trusted a company that will do that to their product uh, until I met Reillusion. I was very impressed with their product, so I, I you know, fuck it, you know, I, I, I overlooked my my own rule uh, because you know, whenever you create a product, you really just want it to be the best it can be. So there's no reason to put out crippled versions of your product, like Toon Boom. You know, there's no need. The only reason to do it is just to make more money, especially the way that Reillusion does it, where there's really no real upgrade path. You buy the standard version, and uh, then you want to upgrade. You're just going to pay whatever everybody else pays for it anyways. 
so you end up buying it twice um that's just a money grab uh thing but you know to each their own that's fine they have a good product so i forgive them uh <laughs> i just kind of recommend people that if you're going to buy a product buy the pipeline buy the the best version that you can because you'll save a lot of more money that way so here's my character by default i have them selected and look at what i have here no plugins all right this is a standard core function of the product yes it requires an iphone but it's a core function dude and just with this alone you're gonna tell me that you want me to pay you another two hundred dollars for a spinning head and no way of actually capturing it as part of a core function my head is literally spinning right now no pun intended <laughs> oh my god um, I was planning on iClone for 3D. Now I have decided to use. You know what? I'm actually taking a look at Blender 2. Blender 2.8 is going to have some really nice things. And with what they're doing with the 2D stuff, I think, based on what I've been reading and like researching and stuff, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly giving it a few hours a week to, to learn Blender finally. Uh, they finally made it to a point where I can actually use it with my left mouse button and right mouse button that I've been accustomed to. And the user interface is very friendly. So I'm, I'm finally able to do stuff inside of Blender. And I have a feeling that with a little work, uh, what, what you can do with G2 characters can easily be rec replicated inside of Blender with, uh, you know, same with a 3D skeleton system and... Uh, um, uh, what do you call it? The, the, the 2D sprite switching stuff. Uh, <laughs> so you should share your videos too man maybe we can learn from each other <laughs> i am going to try something real quick um the the facial mocap stuff with the iphones is actually something that that is fairly generic doesn't take a lot of effort you know there's a couple of alternative apps on the apple uh store that allows you to facial capture on the stuff and when you have competition sometimes you you know you you're able to get you choose a product that might actually work better than the one that reillusion does um so it would be nice if reillusion as an actual feature of the software okay forget the facial capture stuff let us import the uh, the dxf files or the vbh data and convert it ourselves so that we can use our own tools you know so we don't necessarily have to use your plugin i know you want us to but there's better tools out there you know you know people some people have motion uh, motion builder you know some people have other things i mean there's some other alternative things on the apple store that also lets you capture so if we can bring in that facial that even iclone you know you can create your motion your your facial data in iclone export that from there that would be so useful i mean i think something like that a feature like that would have been Check tutorial by Blender Guru. Okay, I'm gonna write it down. Um, here is the Live Face app, and kudos for releasing this thing free of charge. By the way, even though there's other free apps that do the same thing, yours actually works with your program. Um, tap screen for a wireframe. Client app connection succeeded. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, testing. One, two, one, two. So that's me capturing the data live using uh, this iPhone thing. So I'm doing this in Crazy Talk Animator 3. And it's a little meh, but you know, I've learned that. If you go into composer mode and actually go through the trouble of converting it to a G2 plus character, the facial movements are a little bit smoother. So edit, convert to G2 facial system. This is an entire workflow that's kind of being brushed under the rug 
and you're paying two hundred dollars for it. All right. I mean, I'm still gonna pay it. I mean, I, I don't think I have a choice. <laughs> um, so that's been done. I'm not gonna tweak it yet. I mean, I can go through the trouble and and tweaking the deformations to make it like really accurate and stuff. The same thing that I was looking at in Crazy Talk Animator Three. Um, you know, all these little things, but we'll just leave them like that for now. See, like here, like like the jawline just kind of gets a little wacky, so we got to tweak it a little bit. So I'm not going to mess with it too much. The point is that it's there. And all right, so... La, ma, 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 mm. Mm. Okay, so riddle me this. Guys, give me a logical statement here. Um, Crazy Talk Animator 3, facial motion capture using iPhone. Yes, I had to pay a thousand bucks for that tool but it's there core function of the software I stay with crazy talk animator 3 I continue to use that feature just fine or I pay the 200 plus dollars for the upgrade with the plugins to have that same functionality that I already have what sense does that make Damn, they really got us, man. <laughs> I'm going to pay it anyways, uh, but I'm not happy about it. Uh, I have to because it's, you know, it's, it's what I, it's my tool that I use to make a living. But Jesus, this is a very, very, very shameful move on Real Illusion. Jesus. Um, check tutorial about Blender Guru. Use everything over, it's like Google use it. Well, yeah, but I wouldn't have a problem with uh, using everything from Reillusion. They got good products. I just wish the stuff would work well within itself. You know, I, I wish I could bring in a, a G2 character, G3, G whatever character, and just drop it into iClone and use the 3D environments with it. You know, that would be useful. And they have the technology. They can do it. But as is, we had to wait like an entire, like iClone 6 was not compatible at all. Any of the movements that were created in iClone 6 will not work with any version of Crazy Talk Animator. Um, we had to kind of sit out the entire iClone 6 uh, cycle for us to be able to get working motions again. Um, and on top of that, you have to have an additional external product, you know, 3D Exchange to create these conversions. It's, you know, it's something that's, it's obvious, you know, there's a, there's a money grab at play here, but I don't mind it as long as it's a good quality product that gives you a, a you know, it's, it's, it's cheap enough that, that you can afford to, you know, to do it, but not everybody's using this product professionally. You know, not everybody's getting a return on their investment that way. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I've uh I I don't think I can get on board with the blender uh like drawing everything frame by frame just yet. I've seen the results. I'm not that much of a sucker for for pain. Uh I mean, I can do that in Flash. I mean, Flash is a, probably the best cell animation software ever. I can draw by hand, animate and put out, you know, traditional looking stuff or traditional stuff like in no time uh, so I'm not sure if I'm ready to do that in blender I mean that seems to be like a really really difficult process right now um, but I do like their 2d support 
So if I can bring in the sprites the same way that I can bring them into Crazy Talk, I think I can work with it. I make animated stories and rhymes for YouTube channel. Well, you should post your link to it here, man, so that people who are watching this video can click on it and uh, get there and stuff. Maybe subscribe. Um, you know, um, I, I think I've seen all there, there is to see at this point. I mean, I'm going to, I mean, I know this is probably not something I necessarily want. Um, I don't work with raster images. Um, I don't have a problem with working with Photoshop. I use Photoshop just fine. I've used it for almost 20 years. I'm really freaking good at Photoshop. But for animation work, you know, there's a reason I work with vector art. Um, you know, I want my animation to be crisp, to look great. And uh, even if it's for video, I know that I can deal with the rendering process to convert to video. But... You know, we're living in a world of you know 2K, 4K, 8K, and stuff like that. This, on a professional level, this shit is not gonna hold up, man. It's it's locked in to a specific resolution. I just can't come back next year, re-render it at 8K or whatever the format happens to be at that time. Um, I like it too. Yeah. No, I'm in love with that feature. I love it. I'm gonna have to find a way to use it. I'm gonna have to put up with it uh i think i am going to use it you know i know that it requires higher resolution raster images to get it so that so that the you know the shit doesn't look like this here's a character i mean this is a basic clo uh, close-up she looks blurry as hell you know how do you deal with that you can't. You have to do it from the beginning. And in order to make it work, you have to use higher resolution images, which means that depending on your processor and memory on your computer, you're going to have to have a more souped up computer or you're going to have to limit the amount of objects that are on the screen at any given time. You might be able to only handle two characters at the same time, uh, you know, two or three maybe uh, high resolution characters at the same time before the system starts bogging down and giving you choppy frame rates and stuff. Uh, it's going to be one of those things that I'm going to have to uh, to look into. I mean, this is a basic close-up, and this character looks like shit. Look at that. There's jagged lips, and I know what they're looking. I, I know what they're going for, but the character looks like shit. I mean, there's no way of saying it. You know, um, it, this is a basic close-up. Okay, so you're telling me that I can only use your characters from far away or I have to do lower resolution characters so that I can put more characters on the stage this is not so good but we're improving yes it's definitely an improvement man I mean I mean there's workarounds I mean obviously I can see that there's a workaround get a good computer make sure you have plenty of RAM when you do your own characters uh, you know, build them at a higher res. Hopefully, when you bring them in from Photoshop, um, Crazy Talk is not recompressing them. So hopefully, it allows you to keep that higher resolution on the you know the textures for for your sprites. That way, you know, a basic close up doesn't look like that. And this is their characters. I mean, I, I just haven't. Um, if these characters were a little bit more complex, and I can already see this because when people get Photoshop and they start drawing their own stuff, they're not gonna be drawing this cleanly. They're gonna be doing a lot of line work and stuff. They're not gonna be vector looking. Um, see, this character is a little bit higher res. It's, it's already starting to get blurry. So maybe, maybe if you keep it like a good, 150 dpi or above you might be able to get away with some decent decent zooming in there's going to be some experimentation that takes place obviously and uh i hope to be able to put out some uh, videos on that uh i think i am gonna have to buy it but i uh, i am gonna buy this program but it's not gonna be because i feel that it's worthy of my money 
I think it's mainly because they got me. I mean, if I don't buy it, I'm going to be screwed. I'm going to stay behind. You know, part of what I do is that I, is that I produce characters and produce assets for Crazy Talk Animator. So it's either get the product so that the stuff that I do is compatible or or move on. So I don't believe that this product is worthy of the 4.0 name. Uh, if anything, it's an upgrade to the G3 characters, but it's not an upgrade to Crazy Talk Animator as a whole. There's nothing in here that I can see that's that's new Crazy Talk Animator stuff. If anything, I've seen crippled stuff. The facial motion capture is gone. Um, I wonder... See, uh, you're going to have to import all your stuff again because I know I imported with the same paths to my assets. So all my G2 stuff, um, my uh, Crazy Talk Animator 2 and 3 stuff should be showing up here because it's the same paths. So they're using different um, different paths, which is fine. That's just um, you know a little copy and paste. Um, what can we try? What can we try? I mean, I think I mean personally, I think I've seen enough. Um, let's go back in here. I just don't see any improvements, guys. I mean, aside from that 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 head thing, is that head thing worth two hundred bucks? If you've never used uh, Crazy Talk Animator, it's obviously going to be more than two hundred bucks. Um, so I have Photoshop open here, and I'm going to click. I click this eye, and then I'm going to just press that. Select an external image editor to edit. Um, I guess we'll go here. Let's see if we can find where did I install the Photoshop? Could have sworn I had it installed on my main on my my extra drive here. Let's look for it in here. Adobe Edition. We gotta get rid of some of these. Photoshop CC 2019. <clears throat> All right. So I brought that in. It just brought the white part in. So. How does that work? So uh, yeah, I mean that obviously that's going to allow us to update a sprite at a time, which is it's fine, it's great. Sometimes that's all you need. But how does it handle the masking? Save, close. Go back in here. I think that fucked up the entire eye. Is there a calibration function? No, that screwed up the entire eye. Don't do that, guys. <laughs> Don't do that. Uh, things to avoid. Mm -hmm. I exported a single sprite, brought it in. Where's my pupil? So naturally i expected you know because it was an eye it was going to bring it into photoshop as at least three different layers uh which would allow me to do that uh or in the case of it just bringing in the white part then only the white was going to change but uh, apparently not so don't do that avoid doing that 
All right, Kieran, it was great having you on the chat, man. Thank you for joining me on this thing. Thank you for all the suggestions too. And uh, hey, be sure to leave your, your link to your, your Facebook thing so we can subscribe to it. All right, so yeah, don't do that. So I don't know if I call this a bug or an inconvenience, but definitely don't do that. Let's click on this PSD button. Image scale, head and body in two separate files. Head body in one file. Update multiple angle. This is going to be fun to play with. Could not complete your request because the scratch disks are full. Uh, it's a problem on my end. Edit. See if we can clear some of that. Okay, and maybe we'll play around with it later. Uh, it looked like it was going to bring in the whole character, though. Um, Kind of seems a little bit counterproductive to bring in the entire character template just to update one sprite. Um, bad reillusion, bad, bad boy. So that's a couple things that I, mean, I hate to sound like I'm focusing on negative stuff, but I mean it's it's just there. ¿Y qué sucede con los packs que se compraron antes? Uh, I'm assuming that you can still use those packs. I mean, there's no reason to assume that you can't use them. Yeah. Um, sí, estoy seguro que se pueden usar. Eso no, no creo que haya ninguna razón por pensar que no van a funcionar. Uh, lo que no sé es por qué no aparecieron de una vez, porque los puse en el mismo, en el, en, en el mismo path de... De, de donde los instalé cuando instalé esto lo instalé en, en, el, en la misma sección o sea que deberían de haber funcionado desde el principio so yeah they should have worked from the start but I'm, I'm pretty sure you can drag and drop them into the right uh, place and if you're interested in knowing how to do that uh, basically you just go into your documents folder uh, somewhere in here oh in the, the generic one Because you, you know, you can't use yours. Uh, you gotta go to the generic one. Users, public. Uh, I can see why they did that because they want these to work with all the ca all the different um, characters. I mean, all the different uh, profiles that you have. So here's your template file. So yeah, see they have a separate one. So you got. <coughs> Um, Crazy Talk Animator 3 and Crazy Talk Animator 4 right there. So I am sure that this is probably going to screw up a lot of things. I'm going to make a backup copy. Hopefully that doesn't take that long. Oh, I just realized I was working on my second monitor and I wasn't showing you what I was doing. Um, I'm going to make a backup copy of this thing real quick. And uh, that way when I do this, I'm not overriding something important. So it's at 33% right now. And I'm sure that by doing this, I'm going to screw up something, which is why I'm making a backup copy of this. So this would be the procedure that you would use if you wanted to import all your stuff that you have on Crazy Talk Animator 3 over onto um, Cartoon Animator 4 and uh, says it has about one minute left so what we're going to do is give it a minute let it do its thing what else can we look at while that's being backed up? Because I don't want to have to reinstall this from scratch. So I want to make sure it 
it um, it just works. Mm, almost there, 19 seconds to go. So yeah, you go to uh, wherever you have your your public documents. I have mine on my F drive. You go to users. Let's see here. Wherever you have your your user profiles, you go to the public folder. You look for documents. There's the Reillusion folder, and there you're gonna see your stuff, your templates, and all that those things. I don't know where these custom things are, but I know that. Um, if you go to the template, for example, I already made a copy of my template files. Uh, I'll go into the Crazy Talk Animator 3 template. So, Control A to copy. We copy. Go back outside. We go into the number four, and we'll just paste everything in here. And we're going to be overriding a lot of the default stuff. So, hopefully, we're not overriding something that has been updated. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we also got to make sure we make a backup whenever we do that because um, that backup is going to save us uh, from having overwritten something with an older version that needed to be upgraded so as I'm doing that see a lot of these are already being imported um, it's gonna take about a minute and a half right now it's working on the motion files Um, I doubt I can see some stuff coming in. But, see some of these are in here already. I don't need to wait for the resource pack. See, they're being imported. Uh, I can see my Toon Titan folder with all my characters inside of Crazy Talk Animator 4. So that's how you bring those in. Ah, yes, I just remember what I was going to try. Um, naturally, you cannot replace a G3 with a G2. I'm pretty sure you can't. I mean, the motions would not be compatible either, even if you could do it. Nope. I don't even know why I bother trying that one. Uh, <laughs> But you never know, that's how you find out things, huh? So we are going to um, we're going to go in here, go into composer mode. I'm gonna try to steal that character's head and apply it to a G2 character. Now, if this works, I'm gonna forgive Reillusion for all the crappy shit that they've done with this product. Um, same names, do we want to replace them or skip them? Um, shoot, I don't know what to do. Let's replace them. I mean, I made a backup copy, so worst comes to worst, I'll, uh, I'll re-import the, the latest versions. Uh, so, um, let's see. We'll select this guy here. And how do you save a G4 head? Here we go. Select head, custom. Okay. So far, so is good because at least it has given me the option call it girl face okay we just stole a g3 plus or what are they calling it? g3 360 head it's not a 360 head it's a 180 head um now that we have that head let's see if we can hack a g2 body
asta. Dun dun dun! The moment of truth is not even available. Alright, it's not the end of the world. We can still, we can, there's still workarounds for stuff. Let's try this again. Custom. Content manager custom. Head. Find file. So we're going to keep that one there. We're going to try to bring it in directly. I mean, it's obviously hiding it from us because it's a G2 character, but hey, there's workarounds for everything. So let's find out if we can hack our way into this head. I mean, there's no real reason why there should be some kind of dependency on G3. I mean, it's a standalone head. It doesn't work. Uh oh. Uh oh. Wait a minute. It's a chopper. <laughs> oh shit. We found a hack. All right. Okay. I think we found. A hack. Let's see if it works. Okay, I'm not even going to worry about that yet. The point is, we can make it work. Because I'm sure with a little tweaking and stuff. What's it doing? I have a feeling this thing is just gonna crash right now. Ah! Jeez, I've been doing this too long. <laughs> oh man. Okay. So um, we almost hacked it. Oh my god. Okay, see, so this is the kind of stuff that tends to piss me off. The technology is definitely there. Reillusion obviously got it working, but they were so rushed to get this thing out there that they just, they're like, oh, we're not going to bother making it work with the other uh, generation characters. And there's no reason why they, they didn't need to do that, you know, because you take a head like the morph head. You can drop a morph head on any generation character. It'll work fine. You can drop a G2 head pretty much on any generation character, I think. I never tried it on a G3 character, but it should work. And by going around the system, I was able to import a G360 uh, head into a character, into a G2 character, it worked. But the moment I started trying to do something with it, we had a crash. So Adi, in terms of your question, man, uh, as you can see, all the resources and stuff that I had from my previous uh, projects in uh, the previous uh, Crazy Talk Animator programs, 
they're all in here now. So it's just a matter of copying them from your template folder into the, the new template folder. Uh, you should be okay. So let's see. Let's go back in here. Let's try this one more time. See, they don't even show up because they, they, I mean, they, they're purposefully hiding these folders from the software based on the generation character that you have here. They don't want you to run into that bug. So, I mean, instead of fixing that bug, they chose to hide it. And this is why we're going to pay $200. Oh, my goodness. Two hundred dollars right now, while it's on the early release program. I think it's gonna. I think they want more. Um, okay, let me go here. I wonder if this is legible. Maybe there's some stuff that we can hack in here. Uh, facial head version 1.1, da 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 da, enable background, uh, none stroke, da 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 da, fill. Sounds like there's some vector shit going on in here. This is probably for the mask and the facial stuff. I'm gonna have to recreate that. That's, that's, a, that's a vector drawing. This is what vector art pretty much looks like, by the way. Uh, it's just mathematical crap. Um, I don't think there's anything that can be hacked in here. So yes, it's vector data in this in this VG file. It's raw data, so it means this is hackable, whatever the hell this is. Um, it's probably the mask shape for the for the masking of the eye moving left and right. Um, all right, so let's do this. And we have, okay, so we have a G3 360 head on a G2 actor. Now these two items together, that would be such a powerful combination. Please, Reillusion, make this happen, make this work. It's obviously possible, man. Just make it work, please. This is gonna be such a useful feature because we'll be able to get the 360 head, 180 head, okay, let's be real. It's a 180 head with our 360 body and that's gonna be a powerful combination. Um, if I have anything to ask is at least make this work. Um, this is gonna make things so much better. I don't know what happened to that top thing, but. I don't care right now. Um, let's see here. I mean, it's working within this thing. Reminds me of the villain from that old uh, uh, Mazinger uh, Z um, anime from back in the 70s, 80s. I used to watch that when I was a kid. A lot of people know it by the name Trans or Z. Same thing. Um, this seems fine. Where's the calibration thing? I guess those have their own calibration, kind of like the G Plus preview hasn't crashed within this thing so it's only gonna crash when you try to use it on the main canvas <clears throat> let's 
uh, obviously these are not gonna work um, let's see if the perform ones work those don't seem to be yeah they've been locked in um, and this is where we're gonna crash you are trying to apply motion to a different generation character, which may cause element misalignment. Please adjust manually. You know, if element misalignment is the worst I can expect, I would be happy for that. Fail to load file. Okay, well, at least my program did not crash. The mouth is still there. <laughs> oh that's fun I love breaking shit um, let's see if an undo will bring it back without crashing okay it brings that back let's do a front view okay the head's still there let's see what happens now when we hit play by um oh my god that is so fun that is fun now as a hobby is this is the kind of stuff that i spend hours just messing around with and seeing what i can break <laughs> okay so we uh we got something but no, nothing useful unfortunately um what do you guys think man i mean uh personally i mean obviously i'm gonna go ahead and spend the money for it i have no choice and a lot of you also you know i know you're gonna drop the money in there uh for it are you happy about it are you happy that they removed the facial uh feature and are charging you for it now are you happy about uh there being no significant improvements aside from a 360 head that's not vector based uh and it's not compatible with the other generation characters. Um, let me know, guys. Leave your comments, uh, suggestions, things that I should look at. I mean, I, this was the very first time I opened up this product. Uh, st stability, I would say it hasn't crashed. I mean, it crashed one time, but that was because I was, uh, you know, hacking it. You know, that was that was me. I mean, that was you can expect crap like that to happen when you're going outside of the manual um so that's that that's not that's not on them um let me know uh if there's something that i should look at okay but as far as i can, i am concerned it's a gimmicky head rotation thing on a g3 character does not support vector i don't know i don't want to i don't want to make myself a liar I'm going to play with that next. I'm going to see if I can replace those sprites with vector sprites. If I can do that, that's going to win some brownie points in my book. Uh, that's going to be, even though I'm going to be having to go about it a more, you know, a more manual, more hard way of doing it, uh, working with vector art is essential for, for professional work at least for the characters and then backgrounds uh you can use painterly background that's that's expected you know they, they look beautiful but it's just it's just stupid to use raster based images in professional work uh in terms of for, for your characters you know um but i understand the primary user base for this product and um i get it i get it and uh, hopefully I'll be able to produce a lot of characters for you guys too. I think I am going to be adapting to the new workflow. Uh, and uh, I am going to be producing these type of characters. I mean, let's be frank about it. I stand to make more money from these than I do with the G2 characters. G2 characters can, can contain 10 angles. I charge $10 for an entire G2 character. With a G3 character... They contain one angle, so for you to have an entire character, you literally have to buy all 10 angles. So I can make about $100 off of you from one single character. So realistically, yeah, I stand to make more money from that, I guess. Um, 
So, I mean, everybody else is doing it that way. You know, they'll sell you the three angles, $10 a pop, as if it was an, a complete angle. I think it's a complete shame. Um, but I'm going to start doing it. So, and there, you know, no more render styles. Uh, I have no idea why crippling the software, making it worse, is going to improve our industry, our community. But I'm giving it a chance, guys. I do like what I see overall. I do like the little head flippy thing. Uh, I hope I can find ways of actually using this on my own work. Uh, but after having tasted G2 characters, I really do not want to go back to animating everything manually. Because the way I see it is that if I have to animate things manually, you know, sprite by sprite, pose to pose to create custom animation, I really just need to go back to Flash because that process is a million times easier that way. Um, but um, this was just the first video. Uh, stand by, guys, and um, let me know your thoughts. I'm going to go ahead and close out this video now. I have a few buttons that I got to push on here just to make this a little bit more uh, streamlined. Uh, let's see here. That way I can have the other stuff. There you go. Ah, there's no webcam. You can't see me. So you should still be able to see the things that you click on uh, once you see this thing. So thank you for joining me. Uh, send me your questions, comments, and uh, suggestions for other videos. This was the very first one. So um we're off to a grand new adventure for the next couple of years see you soon guys